Hey guys, welcome to the third and final part of this video series which aims to provide a comprehensive overview of 5G mobile networks. Just to recap, this video series consists of three parts, introduction, network and services, and techniques and terminologies used in 5G networks. So far, we have covered introduction and network and services. In today's video, we'll be looking at the techniques and terminologies that are used in 5G networks. 5G networks use many techniques to offer higher bit rates, lower latencies, and flexibility to address a vast range of use cases. So let's now dive into those techniques and interlinked terminologies as part of this final video on 5G overview. As we start going through the different techniques used in 5G networks, let's first clarify some very basic terminologies. Carrier and Spectrum. Carrier. While the term carrier in telecoms generally refers to mobile service providers, for example, AT&T, Vodafone, etc., from a telecom engineering perspective, the word carrier means the carrier frequency used for wirelessly communicating mobile signals. For example, it is possible to have a carrier of 20 MHz bandwidth. Spectrum. Spectrum in mobile communications refers to the frequency spectrum used by mobile operators to create carrier frequencies they use for their mobile network coverage. For example, based on the frequency spectrum in the UK, all mobile operators currently use the 3.4 to 3.6 GHz frequency band for delivering 5G services. Five G networks are very flexible. One of the primary enablers for flexibility and scalability in five G networks is the flexible use of the radio frequency spectrum. It means that the five G frequency spectrum has a vast range. Five G networks are not limited to a single frequency band and are designed to operate in frequency bands ranging from four hundred megahertz to ninety gigahertz. The frequency bands can be broken down into three high-level classes, the low band, the mid band, and the high band. The low band is the sub 1 GHz band, which can provide peak data rates of up to 200 megabits per second. Then the mid band is the sub 6 GHz band, which can offer up to 2 Gbps in peak data rates. Finally, the high band ranges from 20 to 90 gigahertz and it can deliver peak data rates from 5 to 20 gbps in the uk for example all mobile operators currently use the 3.4 to 3.6 gigahertz band for 5g which falls in the mid band range frequency division duplex ftd and time division duplex TDD are duplexing schemes. But what exactly is a duplexing scheme? A duplexing scheme determines how the two-way communication uplink and downlink between a mobile phone and the base station works. 5G networks can operate in both FTD and TDD. The radio frame structure of 5G is designed to support both half duplex and full duplex communication. A full duplex system is where the two-way communication can happen simultaneously. FDD is a full duplex system providing simultaneous communication in both directions. TDD is technically half duplex but can offer concurrent two-way communication that emulates full duplex communication. FDD uses a pair of frequency bands, one for uplink and one for downlink. On the other hand, TDD can use the same band for uplink and downlink but at different times or time slots. Both FTD and TDD have pros and cons, but one of the challenges with TDD is that it requires time synchronization between the serving and neighboring cells to avoid interference. It is therefore suitable for higher frequencies that are used in 5G because those frequency bands, the higher frequency bands in 5G, are mainly used in smaller areas where interference is less of an issue as there are fewer base stations. For the transmission of mobile signals wirelessly, the 5G radio network uses a transmission scheme called Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, OFDM. Based on that, 
5G networks use OFDMA orthogonal frequency division multiple access for uplink and downlink communication. In OFDM, a frequency carrier is split into many smaller subcarriers. For example, a 20 MHz carrier wideband can be divided into smaller chunks of 15 kHz subcarriers narrowband. 5G NR can use subcarrier spacing in the multiples of 15 kHz, for example, 30 kHz, 60 kHz, and of course 15 kHz itself. These subcarriers are then grouped tightly and organized so that each subcarrier's highest point or peak overlaps only with the neighboring subcarrier's lowest point, which is called zero. That way, there is no interference because subcarriers are independent of each other. As 5G networks support a broad range of frequency spectrum, they can potentially operate at frequencies currently used by other generations of mobile networks. Dynamic Spectrum Sharing, or DSS, is a spectrum technology that allows 4G and 5G networks to share the same frequency spectrum. It allows mobile operators with an existing 4G LTE network to launch 5G NR services on existing 4G frequencies, which saves them time and money. DSS can schedule the allocation of bandwidth based on customer demand. So with DSS, a cell within a base station can dynamically assign the entire available bandwidth to 4G or 5G depending on customer need. For example, if a base station has a carrier with a bandwidth of 20 MHz, it can allocate all of the 20 MHz to serve a 4G or 5G phone depending on which device is trying to access the network. Carrier aggregation, CA, is a technique that allows a mobile network to offer higher data rates to end users by combining multiple frequency carriers into one large carrier. That way, the aggregated carrier has a large bandwidth accommodating higher data rates. 5G NR networks can support the aggregation of up to 16 carriers, which means 16 frequency carriers can be combined to make one large aggregated carrier to increase the bandwidth significantly. According to 3GPP, there are three carrier aggregation scenarios, intraband contiguous, intraband non-contiguous, and interband non-contiguous. Let's go through these scenarios one by one. The first scenario for CA or carrier aggregation uses two adjacent RF carriers within the same frequency band. These two carriers are next to each other, so they're called contiguous. The second scenario uses two non-adjacent RF carriers within the same frequency band. These carriers are intraband as they exist in the same frequency band, but since they are not next to each other, they are called non-contiguous. The third scenario is called interband non-contiguous, which makes it possible to combine two RF carriers that are within two separate frequency bands. Massive MIMO is an antenna technology used in 5G networks to improve signal quality, data rates, and network capacity to serve multiple users simultaneously. With MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, the communication between a base station and a mobile phone takes place using multiple antennas to transmit the signal and multiple antennas to receive the signal. 4G networks use a maximum MIMO configuration of 8x8, eight eight. that means 8 antenna elements to transmit the signal and 8 antenna elements to receive the signal. With massive MIMO, the antenna configuration involves tens or even hundreds of antenna elements in one single antenna panel. For example, it is possible to have a massive MIMO system with a configuration of 64x64 64 64 in the downlink. Downlink is a communication from the base station to the mobile phone. Just for context, an antenna configuration of 256 by 256 is also possible. A critical aspect of massive MIMO in 5G is the multi-user capability that supports multiple simultaneous phone users. 4G LTE networks mainly 
use MIMO for spatial multiplexing to improve data rates. However, massive MIMO in 5G focuses primarily on increased network capacity. Beam forming is one of the main building blocks of the massive MIMO technology used in 5G networks. It is a capability in advanced antenna systems that allows the different antenna elements of a MIMO antenna panel to concentrate the signal transmission in a particular direction. Beam forming introduces directivity and shapes the radio signals from the base station antennas to target specific user devices instead of traveling in various directions. Beamforming can extend the range of the signal by shaping the transmission such that the desired beam, for example green one in this picture, gets most of the transmission power to become longer whilst suppressing the other beams that are in the non-desired direction. When separate beams are sent towards individual devices, the chances of interference are minimized and the capacity is well utilized. As a result, beamforming improves both the network coverage as well as the capacity. 5G NR networks use three-dimensional beamforming, 3D beamforming, which means the beams can be horizontal and vertical to support multiple simultaneous users. Spatial multiplexing is one of the most fundamental features in MIMO systems used for improving the efficiency of the frequency carrier which leads to higher overall capacity and bit rates. As discussed earlier in this video, in massive MIMO a large number of antenna elements are separated physically in space to transmit and receive different data streams simultaneously. The overall data stream intended for a specific user can be sent over multiple individual data streams. At the receiving end, these data streams are picked up by an array of receiving antenna elements to combine the various individual data streams as a single data stream. That improves the data rates for an individual user. Massive MIMO in 5G utilizes its multi-user capability to simultaneously handle data streams for many users. Diversity is when multiple antennas are deployed at the transmitter or the receiver to reduce the impact of signal fading. A radio signal can take many paths to travel between a transmitter and a receiver. Some paths are without obstructions, for example high-rise buildings, but other paths may have obstacles in the way. As a result, the different versions of the signal traveling through the various paths may fade at different rates. Diversity exploits this nature of the signal by introducing multiple antennas to capture the different versions of the signal so that they can be combined to improve the overall signal quality. The use of diversity at the receiver is not new in mobile telecoms, but what MIMO does differently is that it introduces multiple antennas at the transmitter as well as the receiver. Diversity makes the signal more robust by improving the reliability of the radio link. However, it does not improve the radio channel capacity. If you want to download these slides, you can find the links in the description. I have created two versions of the slide deck, one free version and one full version. You can download whichever one you like. Thanks for watching the video guys, I've written a detailed post on this topic and the link is in the description. If you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'm posting new videos all the time.